All right, well, here's a more complicated example. So let's try uh, doing this one on paper. That's a good start. See, yeah, that doesn't look like it's quite going to work. All right, so it looks like you got to everything except the coefficient of the oxygen. Do you want to keep working on that, or should we talk yes. about that together? Okay. okay, all right. Now, which element should we balance first? Um, we should not start by trying to balance the oxygens, because the oxygens appear in two places on the right-hand side. So we want to save the oxygen for as late in the day as possible. Even in what we just saw, that even when you leave the oxygen for last, it's the hardest. All right, so you should start with either the carbon or the hydrogen because there's only one carbon in, over here and only one place where there's hydrogens. All right, so um, I think we both, everyone here started by putting the number one over here. Um, if you put a number one over here, you need to put in a fraction over here. So it's better to put the number one here. And maybe, maybe we should be a little more systematic about this. So now, what's the total number of carbons on the left? Four carbons, I'm gonna write that down. So what's the total number of carbons on the right? Four carbons, because they have to balance. So now what does this coefficient have to be? because four times one is four. All right, maybe it helps to actually write down these totals. Now we can balance the hydrogens. What's our total number of hydrogens on the left? So we should have 10 hydrogens on the right. I think you both figured out then that this should be five, because five times two is 10, just like one times 10 is 10. So let's keep using the same approach. What's the total number of, now notice that the right-hand side is finished. We should never change any of these numbers now. I should have mentioned that before. Once you write down a number, you shouldn't change it, because that'll mess up all your other calculations. So I'm not going to change these two numbers, except maybe at the end to get rid of fractions. Um, so what's my total number of oxygens on the right? 13. That's right. So unless we know that number, we're not going to be able to make any progress. But now we have 4 times 2 plus 5 times 1. So we have 13 oxygens total. 4 times 2 plus 5 times 1 is 13. So how many oxygens on the left? 13. Because we want it to balance. So this is how many we want to have yes. anyway. Now we just have to figure out what number do we need to put here to get 13 oxygens total on the left. We have to put uh, 6.5. Yeah, OK. You can do that, 6.5, because 6.5 times 2 is 13. Uh, it's probably more useful when we're working with stoichiometry to work with fractions. 
So would that be as a fraction? Mark that on a paper if you want. So we got 6.5, which is six and a half. Yes. Now how do you turn a mixed fraction yeah, into an improper fraction? Two times six is 12, plus one is 13. That would give us our 13 halves. Okay, um, so then this would be 13 halves, good. Um, and then what should then be our ultimate coefficients when we get rid of all the fractions? 13 and here. Yeah, because how did you get rid of the fraction? By multiplying by 2. This is why I found it more convenient to write this like a fraction rather than a decimal, because it tells me what I need to multiply by. I need to multiply by the denominator. Well, you could have worked this way too. So then this would be 8, and finally 10. Okay. All right, um, so uh, let's review how to get this coefficient, because this was the trickiest. Well, there's a couple different methods. Maybe the most surefire is to call it x. And now what's the equation that we can write about x? What's the equation that we can write about x, given these, oh, so this we don't know yet now. If we don't know this coefficient yet, what equation can we write about x if we know this subscript and we know we want 13 oxygens overall? Um, so 13 equals x times 2. Yeah, x times 2 should equal 13. Therefore, if you divide both sides by 2, that gives us the answer in a very straightforward way x is 13 halves, which is the answer that we were going for. So this is probably the, the most straightforward way to figure this out, working out algebraically. Or if you don't want the algebra, we know we're going to have a fraction. We know we're going to multiply these two things. Well, I, I want to get rid of this 2. So I'll put a 2 in the denominator. And now what do I want this to come out to be? 13. So you can also work about, about the fractions. But maybe it's more straightforward to work through the algebra. Um, so one thing we haven't done in the past that might be helpful is writing down the totals down here to help you uh, I'll just keep grounded about what we're uh, aiming at. Yeah, that helps. Okay. All right. Um, so those are some examples for uh, balancing uh, equations. Uh, again, if you start, if, um, the, the key here is to start by putting in numbers for the carbons and the hydrogens. If you try to put in numbers for the oxygens at the start, it's pretty much impossible. So we have to start with the element that appears the least often on both sides. Um, in all the previous cases, it didn't matter what element we started with because they appeared an equal number of times. But here, the oxygen appears more often on the right than the carbon or the hydrogen. Uh, remind me again, what, what, what's the units for this number? Moles. Moles. It's important to realize that these stoichiometric coefficients are in terms of moles. 